bigger. There we go. All right. So um, for all of you that are just joining us, um, I am Angela Lindauer, and I am the owner of All Hands Pottery Studio. Um, tonight, uh, we're going to do things a little bit differently um, in that we are going to talk to my sister, Meredith Tilly Gordon. Um, she is an athletic trainer, and she is going to talk to us about overuse injuries and um, how to avoid them as a potter. So I'm going to go picture in picture. I'm going to be, I'll be down here in the corner. There you go. Take it away, okay. Mayor. So hi, everybody. My name is Meredith Gordon. Um, I am an, a licensed athletic trainer here in the state of Texas. I'm also certified by the National Athletic Trainers Association Board of Certification. So I am not certified to practice in the state of Virginia. So anything that I tell you here is not going to be a diagnosis. Um, I'm not going to be treating any, you know, injuries or anything like that. What I'm telling you here is just some advice, um, some things that I recommend to avoid overuse injuries. Um, I want to make that very clear uh, because I could get in trouble if people think that I'm practicing outside of my state. Um, and I have a mortgage, so it's really important that I keep this <laughs> <laughs> So um, what I do is I typically work with athletes. Um, but there is a push with athletic training that we're an athletic trainer for all. So with the COVID crisis, <clears throat> excuse me, we've had athletic trainers that have been pulled into the hospitals and other work environments to help out, you know, the nurses um, with triage. Um, they're doing temperature checks, that kind of thing, wellness checks to help out with the, you know, obvious enormous influx of people. Um, so generally I work with acute care um, with, you know, athletes that have hurt themselves on the court of the field, sometimes off the field, you know, at home doing stupid stuff. Um, I'm not a physical therapist. Physical therapy, they work with more of a um, widespread, I guess, more, more people. Um, they work with, you know, people with arthritis, people that have um, chronic injuries, people that have just gotten out of surgery, that kind of thing. Um, I can work with those people too, but mainly my concern is, you know, musculoskeletal disorders and injuries. Um, we have a bunch of emerging settings for athletic trainers because it's not really well known what we do. Um, so people are just kind of figuring out what we can do for them. Um, there's actually athletic trainers that work in the military. They work with, you know, um, guy, or the people in boot camps. I um, actually work with people that are, um, I think, out to the fleet now too. So what our job is, is we want to get you back to work, back to your sport as quickly as we can. We want to keep you playing. We want to keep you creating. We want to keep you doing whatever it is you do. Um, there's also people, you know, athletic trainers that work with police and fire. If I have a football player that gets injured on a Friday night, I can have him in the clinic on Saturday morning, whereas a police officer or a, you know, fire department employee, fireman, fire woman, whatever, um, injures themselves. They might have to wait two weeks for an orthopedic appointment, which I think is ridiculous. <laughs> um, but that's the way it is, especially here in Texas, where football is king. So we're actually that um, some departments, some cities actually have athletic trainers come in and work with their police and fire, so we can actually help them get back to work quicker. Um, so Meredith, mom says uh, PTs try to get patients back to basic life skills. ATs bring them back to playing condition. Well, that's, thanks, mom. <laughs> <laughs> well said. <laughs> so um, along with police and fire and working with the military, there's also, you know, settings in industrial. Like I work right now, um, I'm contracted to work in a warehouse and I help the people that work in the warehouse with their chronic injuries, their acute injuries, whether they occur at work or outside of work. So I'm keeping them working, you know, getting them back to work quicker. So there's also um, athletic trainers in fine arts. So they're working with Cirque du Soleil, they're working with ballet companies. Um, I don't know of any that work with potters exclusively, which I, I think could absolutely be an emerging field. But I want you guys to think of yourselves as athletes because you are using a specific set of movements to create. So what do you think ballerinas do? They're using a specific set of movements to create this dance, right? So think of yourself as an athlete. Don't think of yourself as just, I'm a couch potato that gets up and throws every once in a while. Don't think like that because you're using very specific movements. And I know um, that, you know, Angie has got, don't 
<laughs> HIPAA doesn't apply here. Um, <laughs> and she's got golfer's elbow. Okay. So there's various things that can happen to you guys that I want to keep you guys creating. Um, I know it's a big outlet for Angie. I might be a big outlet for you too. So I'd like to see you guys continue to do this and not be sidelined because of an injury. Um, sometimes you, you get a sore, you know, wrist or ankle or something. You go to the doctor and they're like, Oh, we'll rest it for six weeks. I can get you back a little bit quicker than a doctor. Okay. Because I can show you some things to do at home that, will help you um, continue your career, maybe lengthen your career. Um, so before we start, <laughs> I know I've been talking a lot, I feel like it. Um, you can email me or message me for questions. Um, absolutely drop them in the comments. Um, what I'm going to tell you is not a diagnosis. Um, I'm not giving you medical advice. Um, I'm just giving you some ideas and things to do before you start. Okay. Um, any questions, please, please ask them. I'm more than happy to answer. Um, and if you have any suggestions, if we should go back and do something with maybe the back or you know, the lower body, that's fine too. We can do that. So um, what I wanted to go over was um, you guys use your hands, you know, obviously a lot. So what I wanted to do is a quick warm up maybe to give you some ideas of things to do that can help you um, strengthen and get you know, the blood flowing into your fingers and your hands, your wrists um, to help you kind of warm up before you go into this. Because if you're just, you know, think about like putting a rubber band in the freezer. OK, you don't get the rubber band right out of the freezer and start stretching it. Right. Because it's going to break. It's going to be brittle. And it's the same thing as if you're not you know, warming up your hands or your elbows or your wrists, whatever. It's the same thing. You're using really you know, tight and shortened muscles to do really intricate, fine things. So the first thing that I would suggest you do um, is maybe take a piece of clay. I have slime because I kind of like it. But what you can do is, I'm going to use this as a tabletop. It's my clipboard. Okay, so you just put this on your tabletop, okay? And take your fingers one at a time and just draw the clay or the slime or the Play-Doh or whatever you got and just draw it, you know, kind of back to you with each finger. Okay. Just do that. And you may do it three or four times. You know, you can go both directions with both hands. Um, another thing to do is you can lay a towel out. Um, put maybe a can of something or a little bit of weight. And you can use your fingers to kind of scrunch that towel up and draw that weight closer to you. So that's going to help strengthen those little muscles in your fingers. And it's also going to help the blood flow in there. So your fingers go, hey, okay, we're ready to do something. Um, you can also do some things for um, like proprioception. So you can take your finger, your hands, and just touch each one of your fingers like this, kind of to get started. I know it seems a little bit silly, but you're helping um, kind of with nimble, getting nimble with your fingers, I guess. I don't know. Angie, help me out here. <laughs> yes, yes. We, we all do that, I'm sure. Okay, so you know something like this just to get warmed up. Um, so another, let me ask. Let me ask you a question about when we were doing that with the clay. Is that also with your thumb? Yeah, or you can absolutely use your thumb, but you want to use your thumb in a natural position. You don't want to like make your thumb do something it doesn't normally do. Okay, so when you're pulling with your thumb, you may go oops, up, like this. Okay. Or you know to the side. You know, whatever, whatever you're going to do with it to the clay, mm -hmm. if that makes any sense, um, then I would absolutely recommend doing that. You know, look at them, I put them into. And you can do the same thing on the towel is, you know, just use your thumb to, to scrunch that towel up. So you use all your fingers one way and then turn it and do this way with your thumb. Okay. Okay. Where you can pull down if that's, it's going to be a little awkward, but it can help. Okay. Um, so let's see what else um, for your wrist and your forearms, um, a lot of people um, have what's called golfer's elbow or tennis elbow. What that happens there is you get an inflammation in oops, the epicondyles of your elbow. Okay, you got two little condyles here. Um, and they get 
inflamed from you know certain motions it could be um if you're you've got tennis elbow it could be because your grip on the tennis racket is too big or you're just using too big hunks of clay um it could be that you're you're holding too tight or you're gripping too tight um what you can do for that is um i would recommend well this is what i recommend to stretch first sorry i got ahead of myself so you take your hands together straight out like this put your fingers together Okay. And just make a figure eight with your hands. I can feel some popping in there. But you're, you're warming up a little bit. Okay. So just do and that. Are your, wrist, are your, wrist, are your uh, elbows supposed to be locked out or is it? You can bend them. Okay. There's really no, however you're most comfortable. Like okay. right now, I'm kind of at an odd angle, so I can stretch it out, but it looks like I have super long arms. So, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Just do this, you know, get some blood flow in there. Okay. And you can stretch your forearms by taking your arm and holding it straight out in front of you. I can do this to the side if that's easier for you guys or Angie, you got it. Yeah. Okay. So I've got my hand facing palm out. So I can go right here with my other hand with my fingers mm -hmm. and I can just push straight back. And you should feel a stretch on the underside of your forearm. Okay. Right. You don't want to hold it for, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to bounce. You do this number. You just want to hold it for a gentle stretch. I would say do three sets of maybe 10 or 15, a slow count, you know, 10 Mississippi, you know, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, that kind of thing. Um, and then you can, when you're done with that, you can relax and then put your hand down, take your other hand and do the same thing. So you're just pushing your fingers back like that. So you should feel a stretch on the top of your forearm. Okay. Just feel a stretch there. And I would do that again, like three sets of 10. Um, another way to, you can strengthen your forearms also. Um, I picked a can of beans because it's a good grip strength. It's not too small. I'm not trying to grab onto something this size and, you know, okay, here we go. This is a good grip strength. It's kind of a natural grip strength for me, you know, grip for me. So I would get something like this. It also weighs about 14.5 ounces. It's, it's a good size. Okay. And what I can do with this is I can take, I'm using this to my table. So I can take my forearm, lay it across. So my hand is kind of hanging off the table. Okay. And I can just pull up like this. So I'm just doing a little bit of you can see that I am not, my forearms are not very strong because you can see the shutter when I go down and up. <laughs> okay. And you can also do let's see, side to side. I don't know if you can see that because of the picture. Oh, can you do the other hand? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Got to figure this out. All right. So you can do side to side. Okay. okay. Your, your forearm should not be moving. It should be all hands. All hand and wrist. Okay. So you can do up and downs. You can do side to side. And again, your your forearm should not be moving. Your wrist should not be moving other than that side to side motion. Okay. Um, if that's too easy for you, you can get, you know, a bag of rice or something else that's a little bit heavier. I would recommend just going with something small, maybe just a can of beans. Okay. <laughs> Um, at first, just to warm that up. Um, let's see. Something else that you can do if you're having pain, you know, here in your elbows. Oops, sorry, elbows. <laughs> you can take some tape. Um, it's commonly outside of the athletic training world. It's called horse tape. It's a power flex tape. Um, it's stretchy and it sticks to itself. And you can just make a really um, kind of a not a tight band, but a firm band. Okay, keep forgetting, sorry. <laughs> right through here. Okay, just where it hurts. Um, you can just take your arm, stretch it out. You want to make a fist. Okay, and then just wrap it, you know, right here. And, you and not tight enough to like... Yeah, you don't want to cut off your circulation for sure. You don't want to um, like sleep with that on. That's just for now a fix to get you through whatever you're doing. And it's okay to use that like when I would be actively throwing to have that on my arm? Yeah, absolutely. As long as you're having pain, then it, it, it would do no harm to have that on there. 
it would actually help you keep you, you going. Um, I would recommend also setting an alarm, um, maybe getting up every 15 minutes or so or 10 minutes. <laughs> maybe I, 30 minutes. <laughs> no, I'm going to say 15 or 10 because I know you. <laughs> And I know that you're not going to quit until it's right. <laughs> so, y'all, she claims not to be a perfectionist. BS. <laughs> She's a recovering perfectionist. <laughs> huh? Recovering. <laughs> recovering. recovering. <laughs> so, yeah, she's recovering. All right. <laughs> so, um, I would recommend taking a break. Okay. Um, get up, you know, stretch stretch a little bit, you know, do a little figure eights, you know, you know, just stretch it out a little bit every 10 minutes or so. That way you're not, it gives you that break. So you know how you look at something too long and you can't see it anymore. So, you know, take that break, get it, walk away, come back to it. I have to do it when I'm quilting or sewing because I'm like, this doesn't look right. I can't get it to look perfect. So, I'm putting bad vibes into this quilt because now I'm cussing at it and carrying on. So I have to get up and walk away. And then I come back and then I've got fresh eyes. We have a comment here. It says, um, this is from Leslie. It says, I have a problem with the shoulder where my arm connects when I tighten my arms to my body to control my clay for whatever reason. I feel it in my shoulder. Okay. I was just about to get onto that, actually. So, <laughs> all right, Leslie, we got you. Okay. See so you guys when you're throwing pots. Um, there's really no ergonomic way for you to sit. Um, you're always kind of hunched over because you've got to look inside whatever you're working with and it's, you're, you got to be low, low to it so you can see it. You can't sit where in a perfect world it would be, you know, up here where you could work with it at a, at a natural level. Okay. So you guys are always hunched over. Um, so what I would recommend is that you be mindful of that when you're doing other things. So if you're on the computer, just remember to sit up and put your shoulders back, put your head back. Everybody, if you notice when they turn sideways, even I do it, your, your ear is not directly over your shoulder anymore because you're, you're head forward. You're used to leaning into things. So see how I sit up and I actually get taller, right? Oh, well, we seem to have lost Meredith. Um, I don't know if we're still alive or not, um, but I will see if I can get her back. Up oh, there she is. She's coming back. <laughs> I'm not even showing you, Meredith. They haven't seen it. <laughs> so why don't you go back out and come back in? There you go. Okay. She didn't see it. There you go. <laughs> This is freaky thing where it goes like in frayed and I have weird teeth and my eyes are colored. I don't even look like me. It freaks me out. It's like who else is in this room? So anyway, okay, so I'm back. Um, just be mindful of when you're sitting, okay, that you want to sit up straight. So you may have to be, it, it'll be awkward for a little bit, but, you know, put your computer up at head height, you know, at eye level. So you're not looking down and hunched over all the time. Okay, I have to sit on the couch with my Kindle, like on my knees sometimes, because I'm guilty of it too. But the more you practice at it, the more it becomes a habit. Okay. Um, so with that being said, with the hunching over, you've shortened your pec muscles. Okay, those muscles right in here. Um, I'm not like the rock. I can't pop my pecs, but here it is. Okay, so it's right here. So what you can do to stretch that out, um, you can lay on your back. Um, on a bed or a table, whatever you got that's firm enough to where you can just let your arm hang at the, off the side. You want the bed to be, you know, of course behind you, but you want it to be right here at the right here at the shoulder joint. Okay, so you've got that arm just hanging off the bed like that. Okay, um, you can put a little weight in your hand. You can put it. Uh, can of green beans and I hate green beans. Okay. Yeah, I was about to say, I was kind of impressed you had those in your house. <laughs> um, Jason eats them. I don't even mess with them. Like they're in the pan. He has to take care of it. I'm out. So, okay, so you can take this, you can lay on the edge of the bed, you know, the, the edge of the mattress right here, and just put your arm straight out and just put the canopies and or beans in there 
and just let it hang. Let the weight do its job. Okay, the weight's going to help pull it. You're going to feel a stretch through here. You might feel a stretch in the back, you know, down your arm. But that's okay because we want this area to be loose and to loosen up. Um, Angie does something. You lay on the floor. Oh, um, yeah, I lay I lay on the floor and I, I go into almost like a, <laughs> I call it the cornholio position. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> And then I, when I, um, I just, I allow my arms to hang back because I'm so tight across here that it's hard for me to lay on my back like this and have my hands actually touch the floor. So I just let them hang until I finally get stretched out enough to where my, my hands, the back of my hands touch the floor. Yeah. So that'll help you like open this up and you don't want to be that old guy or lady with the hunchback, you know, who's so you want to be healthy. You want your spine to be healthy. You want to be opened up through here. It also helps you breathe. You get deeper breaths when, you, when you're opened up and the air is allowed to come in. Okay. Uh, let's see what else I got. Um, so um, if you're having problems like spasms in your traps, which is a really huge muscle, it connects in the back of your head down to your low back and out to your shoulders. Really big muscle. Um, and it tends to get little spasms, and we call them tootsie rolls because it's a little hard spot of tissue. Um, if you have a tennis ball or a baseball or a small, you know, one of the small weighted yoga balls, if you take that um, back up against a wall, okay, so you're going to be standing like this, like the wall's behind you, um, take the ball, put it where you have the soreness, and then walk your feet out so you're pushing the ball against the wall. Okay, and then you can just roll side to side on it. And you can roll up and down. And you're just kind of doing a, a little bit of a squat. But you'll feel it when it hits that knot, when that hits that spasm area, because it's going to make a pop sound. It's going to feel like a pop. It's going to feel like a snap. It's going to feel, you know, you're going to tell there's something in there. So it's a self massage. So I would not, I'm not going to tell you to go and just mash the crap out of it. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to say, go until you feel that kind of good pain. That good like a sh good stretch um, when you get a massage and you know somebody hits that spot they're not really just jamming their thumb in there or their elbow into you they're kind of they're just rolling you know that that knot out we have so one comment that says uh lacrosse balls are amazing for this yes they totally are i did not even think about lacrosse balls because we don't have lacrosse down here that much so yes <laughs> lacrosse balls are amazing for that good job <laughs> Good <laughs> <laughs> um, and so for your shoulder, um, if you're feeling like tightness in the, you know, like in the front still, um, what you can do also is stand in an open doorway. So when you're standing in that doorway, you can take your arm, oops, this one, <laughs> take your arm and just put it straight out. I'm not doing above yet. I'm not doing below. I'm just doing straight out 90 degrees. Okay. And you put that door jam like right in here on your arm and you just kind of step into it. So you're like this. So you're, you're pushing your shoulder in a little bit. You're pushing you're, the door is pushing your arm out like that. I don't know if that makes any sense. It doesn't make sense. Okay. So you do that and you'll feel a stretch. You know, you should feel a stretch here. Um, you'll feel a stretch maybe down the back of your arm a little bit. It'll, it'll get your shoulder complex. Okay. And then you can also go up. So go up. I'd say about maybe 45 degrees, maybe a little bit higher. Um, do it again, you know, lean in, you'll feel a stretch. And then also go low. So maybe, I don't know, I can't remember the degrees that way, but anyway, go low. <laughs> about 45 degrees, like low. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then just do the same thing. So just push your shoulder in a little bit and you'll feel a stretch there too. Um, like I said, I'm not trying to diagnose anybody. I'm just trying to give you guys, you know, some skills that will keep you comfortable and able to do what you love, you know, what may be an outlet for you longer. So please, if you have any comments or questions, let me know. I'm more than happy to give you some some advice. Didn't you say that there was a, um, you could lay with your head off the bed to, if you're getting a sore neck? Tell me you about can. that. Um, you can. That's another, that's a good thing. Um, you can lay on the edge of the bed or a table, whatever you've got that's kind of firm. Okay. And then you um, just lay with you know, the mattress, maybe about here on your neck and just lay back and let your head hang. And that can help also with your tight traps because you're, you're, 
you're letting your head go backward and just carry the weight. Okay, so you're getting that stretch in. Okay. Any more questions? Anybody? I hope it didn't go too fast. I feel like I went really fast. No, you did just great. Oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys have any questions, any, any, anything further, you can, if you, you can message Meredith at. On the go AT. I'm on Facebook. Um, it may be difficult to find me. So you can look for me under Meredith Lynn. It's M E R I D I T H L Y N N. Um, I'm on Angie's page on both of them. So you could probably find me there. Um, if you want to chat about something or you need some advice about something, you know, uh, we do get a comment and it says, um, this is from Shelby. And she said, I've noticed when I've been throwing for a long time, when I stand up, my hips hurt. What's the best stretch for that? Okay. Um, my favorite stretch is yoga stretch and it's called, um, the child's pose. It's where I wish I could do this because it's going to be weird <laughs> if I try to describe it. So what you're going to start out is with on your hands and knees. Okay. Um, and then you're going to push back with your hips. Um, and then stretch your arms out in front of you. And then you're going to drop your head. So you're going to try to push your, your hips and your butt back to your feet. And then you're just going to lower your head and stretch your arms out and you'll feel a stretch like in the low back and there's some other hip stretches you can do but i really can't demonstrate them <laughs> well i mean if you if you know the name of the yoga pose they can always google that and if they've got more questions but i think it's there's like a i think it's called a frog pose where you're almost a plank but you're you've got um instead of being like a straight plank you've got your knees bent and they are like on the floor like sideways so like a frog would pose basically okay <laughs> i don't know if that makes sense all right um, i will uh i'm gonna look that one up <laughs> so, <laughs> my description does not do it justice <laughs> so, um that might be a little bit of a help for you um you can always um did that cover it shelby let's see if i can do this one i might be able to do one for you <laughs> yoga pose for us <laughs> i'm not gonna try to stretch so let's see how this turned out okay <laughs> don't judge me you guys this is the first time I'm doing this <laughs> like online let's see athletic trainer i'll be there for you <laughs> so, so you take your foot and you put it up on the table like that okay, okay so i'm still standing up oh my head just popped <laughs> and you just hold it and you feel the stretch like under your butt, down the back of your leg, and on the side of your leg, so your hip. Mom says that one hurts, and then she said the half pigeon is good too. Okay, tell her to describe what the half pigeon is. <laughs> That's what you get, nosy Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Mom. Uh, so, <laughs> if you can't tell, Linda McGrattily is our mother. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So thanks, Mayor. We appreciate it. Um, I think you did the cool down thing. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were done. Oh, I'm just getting into this now. Also, warrior pose, I'm, I'm told. This is from uh, Valerie. These are all good ones. Um, and when you're done stretching mm -hmm. or you're done throwing, um, give yourself a good stretch. Be done with it. Okay. Um, just do all, you know, do the figure of eights. Do the forearm stretches. Um, I would do them when you stop throwing, and then I would do them right before you go to bed. Um, and then I don't sit, get up in the, you know, don't get up in the morning and then go, okay, I got to do my stretches. You know, don't do that. Um, wait till you're about to throw, and then you know, move your fingers around, move your forearms around, um, just that kind of stuff. So it helps your blood flow. It helps your muscles warm up and get ready for the activity. So, okay, I'm done. Okay. Now <laughs> All right, I'm going to make us equals again. Okay. There we go. All right, y'all. So um, that is all I have for you this evening. I'm not going to throw tonight. Um, my golf elbow is working up a little bit, and it's just kind of been a stressful day. 
So I'm going to kind of call it quits after this, but next week, hopefully we will be close to getting out of, um, oh, what is it? Uh, I got sidetracked, which is funny because that's what Shelby was saying. She says, I really want to get into yoga, but like I'm easily sidetracked. <laughs> I too. Mean, Shelby. Um. <laughs> totally get on YouTube. They've got quick workouts. They got really quick, you know, um, flow, whatever they're called. Mom, what are they called? <laughs> but they've got really quick ones you can do because I have the attention span of a squirrel. <laughs> so. All right. So um, anyway, next week I will be doing some throwing. I know I had one request so far of making a butter bell, um, which is um, also known as a French butter dish, um, which is kind of an upside down butter di butter bell that fits inside another piece. Um, and then those there's water at the bottom. And it, basically it seals the butter in, um, allowing it to stay at room temperature and soft without letting it get rancid. So um, I will be in the studio tomorrow from 10 to 1. And then again on Saturday from 10 to 1. So if you need anything, let me know. I still have clay. I have wheels to rent. Um, and uh, if you need to come glaze or drop off anything for bisque, I will be there. Um, I've still got some stuff on the shelf. I'm getting ready to do a glaze fire. So if you've got stuff that needs to be glazed, it's probably um, probably ready to, I'm, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be doing the glaze fire soon. Um, if you, if you brought in bisque, it's probably done. So, um, anyway, take care y'all stay safe, wash your hands, be healthy. Um, and we will see you soon. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Mayor. All right. Bye. Bye.